As in the last episode, this time we are drawing even closer to the end. Well, closer for some things, directly on it for others. Jeez. Here we got it. You bit my face. Just a little kid watching the Discovery Channel. What a beauty. So far, this had been a three-person adventure made up of three people that came together from around the world due to coincidence in the same time at the same place. And we had all went out on this common adventure to have an Australia road trip. And although the road trip was drawing to a close for all of us, for one of us, the Australia trip altogether was about to be done. For about the past three weeks, we had been about the only company each other had had. From Martin, I've gained greater knowledge of locations and tactics for finding Australian reptiles directly from a local. And from Peter, I've derived a greater sense of urgency and the need to travel and see the world. I've got the bug now, ever since he drug me off through Bali and threw it every day on a desperate death march to get as much in as we possibly could in our meager three days there. And we only had one night left. One more drive to go on and try to find something worth looking at. True. <laughs> I had finally gotten right and properly fed up with the weather and how it was treating us. It was getting very hot developing heat rashes everywhere, at least I, mean, I was. So finally, it's at a breaking point in the site, guys, I'm getting us a hotel. And it gave us a better experience near the end anyway, and some good last nights. Looking out the window here, you could see that the wet season was really upon us and we were getting lots of water coming down. So we were in decent spirits about what may be out this evening and why everybody else was trying to plan what we're going to do and how we're going to deal with it. Well, I was here getting B-roll. Priorities. Seeing as we weren't very properly equipped to deal with this weather, we first removed a bunch of things off the Land Cruiser to get them inside where they'd be safer from this rain. Then settled in, relaxed, and got ready for this last night. We had one more very wet chance at a good find. Looking for stuff in the rain has a lot of ups and downs. It's pretty good because it's a very different environment to normal and it can stimulate a lot of things to change their behavior patterns or fill in their burrows and get them to come out. But you still never really know what you're going to find. It can be just too wet and cold for a lot of reptiles to be out or anything else. You often do find lots of amphibians though, so that's nice, but around here that also comes with just being like, oh, that sucks, a bunch of cane toads. Tonight though, we had some success. This is a brown tree snake, or Bioga irregularis. These guys are actually some pretty cool snakes, and one of my favorites. I actually made a video on them going off in detail rambling about them. A bit more than I should have without the best uh, angles or anything that we need to revisit. But at any rate, they're often underappreciated as a find because of how common they are. But I still think they're pretty cool. They oftentimes have very vibrant colors and also quite vibrant attitudes to go along with it, as you can see here. Keep an eye on Martin's hand. You can see right here that he's just received a bite. I'll be playing it back again in slow motion. These are venomous snakes, but their venom is not that strong, and they're rear fanged. So they really have to chew to deliver very much venom. So you're generally relatively safe with it. So ends one leg of the trip. The departure of Peter. While Peter messes around with retrieving the key from his keyring, Martin helpfully retrieves a trolley for us. Only to find that, well, 
the cage is locked. It needs a key. This was a weird moment for all of us. We were about to lose our best friend of several months and the third person of our trio. And we were doing our best to help get everything unloaded and facilitate his transfer. And we were looking forward to having more space, but we weren't really excited to see him go. The ending of an era of the videos. Out of all of us, <laughs> Peter seemed to feel it the most. In typical Peter flight fashion, he arrived too early. I'm going to awkwardly follow Peter to the camp. <laughs> Due to restrictive airport parking policies, we had to leave him before he even checked in. It's been quite the ride, and though our shoulders greatly welcome the newfound space inside the cab of the cruiser, you've been missed ever since, and I just hope you've had as good of a time herping back in the States as you did over here with us. Though Peter had a slow start going back home during winter, he has since had very productive herping adventures, and even managed to go over and look for amazing animals in Cuba before COVID hit and all the restrictions got crazy. You really should go check out Peter Crawford on Instagram, at Pete Craw. He's always posting all kinds of cool things from all the adventures he takes around the world. If you think half the stuff you see me doing on here is any good, you should see what he manages to do with all the different trips he gets to go on. And he's currently on a North American herping trip, so stay posted for that. We still think of you every time we go on a camping trip and you'd probably be surprised just how often you come up in conversation. From the south of the country literally being on fire, to a pandemic sweeping the globe, this year has been an unmitigated disaster. What I can say though is, it hasn't been boring. Anyway though, meanwhile, back during this episode, we had to go deal with some pressing matters after dropping Peter off such as doing a better job of repairing the windshield or finding those sweet, sweet herbs. All coming up on the next Cobbled Together episode of the Australia Road Trip. For this episode, I knew I had to include Peter leaving, and I wasn't sure how big of a part of the episode to make it. But then I decided to just lean into it really hard, look for some sad music, and see if I can make an episode that actually carries one strong theme throughout. Let me know what you think about it. Well, goodbye till next time. And as always, thanks for watching. This is where I need your help to get off to a good start. Please smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, share if you're feeling inclined. Hell, if you're feeling frustrated by me, feel free to smash that dislike button. All engagement is good engagement, and I need as much as I can get at this point. As you can see from this awesome editing rig behind me, I've been investing heavily in getting better equipment to produce higher quality content. So I'm excited to tell you that I'll be doing a countdown of my old videos being released one per day, all leading up to when I will be releasing fresh new content produced with my better hardware. I'm excited to see you there. For a better slash longer explanation of what's really going on around here, please click this video. Anyway, I know your time is valuable and I appreciate you spending it with me. Thanks for watching and I genuinely hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Anyway, real talk right now, I actually really do need your help here at the beginning, so please, smash that subscribe button, do all the things, tell some friends about it if you're willing, that would be awesome, you're absolute legends, have a wonderful day.